We're happy to be joined by uh, Ryan Strom in a session of rapid fire. Ryan, the, the rapid fire will come farther towards the end of the interview. Uh, for now, you find yourself uh, safely entrenched in a suburb of Toronto and Mississauga. What's uh, COVID-19 sort of been like for you over the last week or so? Um, obviously very quiet. Um, just kind of bunkering down here. Uh, just got some family, close family that we've been with. But other than that, I mean, kind of the same as everyone else in the world. I feel like we're just kind of uh, locked down watching some news in the morning. There's actually a gym in the house here, which is great. So we can do a little bit of a workout and, you know, stay sane a little bit, keep the body moving. And, um, you know, I've definitely been sleeping in though and eating really well and, you know, taking advantage of the time off as well. I think uh, it's a good, 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 Good event, good opportunity to, you know, reconnect with your family and, uh, you know, reset the mind and the body. And, um, you know, it's been uh, it's been a, a challenging time in the sense that I'm, you know, a social guy. I like to go out, but it's been kind of nice to just kind of chill and lay low. Yeah, you, you definitely are a social guy. And I know that from your, your time with uh, with Edmonton and now continuing with the New York Rangers. Have you, you know, been able to socialize at a distance with your teammates to find out how they're doing, where they are and how they're dealing with all this? Yeah, we got a group chat, which uh, is usually pretty, uh, pretty revved up during the day. I think, especially with guys pent up in the houses, and um, I think we the the newest topic is trying to get a poker stars game with all the guys in the team going. So uh, we're trying to find ways to stay connected and stuff like that. And um, not to mention the NHLPA, we've had a bunch of calls with like the league and stuff like that. So guys have been able to stay connected through the calls. And um, yeah, I mean, I I guess today's day and age with technology, this is the best time. Um, you know, for something like this to happen in the sense that you're pretty connected to the world. I mean, um, I mean, you can pretty much do everything from your house now that more than ever before. So um, it's no lack of communication, which is nice, but, uh, you know, I definitely miss being at the rink and, you know, around my teammates for sure. You're mentioning the NHLPA and I, I'm not necessarily saying we need all the details, but what are some of the things maybe you could share as to how they're keeping you up to date or, or you know, just making you feel, I don't know if at ease is as possible right now, but at least informed. Um, I think the number one thing they've been doing is making sure that everyone's healthy, um, that we have all the health care advice we need. They've got doctors on staff, uh, whether it's their physical health or mental health, too. I know it's a time when a lot of guys are you know, a lot of quiet time and, you know, time just alone, which we're not really used to, right? So kind of experiencing new things right now. And, you know, this pandemic has really been crazy. So um, they've done a great job just making sure the resources are there, that we have all the information out there from, you know, city to city and from our teams in the league. And um, and I think the other important thing is just to keep us aware of the business side of it. I think uh, the NHLPA does a really good job of listening to us and our, our opinions. And they're just trying to figure out the course of action going forward here. But I think the most important thing has been just taking care of our health and, you know, making sure, you know, we're uh, we're staying healthy and staying safe. And, you know, they've done a good job so far. Well, New York City is the city that never sleeps. And I know you're not there, but uh, the city, the state has really uh, been hit hard with the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you have some friends or maybe some neighbors where you live uh, that have kind of uh, sketched a bit of a picture for you of what it's like where you normally are uh, playing for the Rangers? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been home for about a week now, but even before I left, it was starting to get a little bit crazy. I think just, you know, the we live right beside a grocery store, luckily, but it was uh, it was pretty busy, the grocery stores, and there wasn't much available. And um, I can only imagine that it's kind of ramped up since we've been home. So, um, you know, it's a very uh, uneasy time for a lot of people. This is very new. I mean, I've never gone through anything like this. And, um, you know, you want to, you know, stack up on resources, but you want to do your part and, you know, making sure the seniors are okay and people like that and people at risk and, um, so it's a fine line. And I, I know in New York City, just with so many people and um, just even going through our building, you got to go through an elevator, you got to press the buttons, you got to see the doorman. So, I mean, there's mm. there's so much, you know, at risk there. So, I mean, there's so much more play that people don't really realize. But, uh, you know, it's been good. I think, uh, you know, to be home now, I think we feel a little more comfortable just being with our family. And, um, you know, it's a it's an uneasy time for everyone, but um, we're doing the best we can. And I know that the uh, you know, the New York City's got some of the best healthcare officials in the world, so they'll be fine. Well, let's discuss uh, the New York Rangers, who were one of those teams that was kind of making a charge. Uh, not quite there, but but pushing towards a playoff spot. How do you feel about the season, at least for now, being on pause for a team that was uh, looking to get into the playoffs? Yeah, it's it kind of it kind of sucks a little bit just in the sense that I think we had a little something special going. We were... Uh, we were able to kind of come back a lot in games and we we're winning big games and we we're having like magical moments. It felt like, so you never know what could happen in a season like that. But, you know, I think first and foremost, I think the biggest thing that most players I've talked to just want to realize is that, you know, 
you know, the health of the world and the people are more important right now, I think. Um, you know, hockey is, you know, obviously our life and it's a great outlet for all the great fans we have in the world. But at the same time, I mean, the health of, you know, the civilians is more important. And, um, you know, it's a, we got to do our part. And I know we have a little bit of a social platform that we can make a difference. But I think if, uh, you know, athletes and coaches and the, the teams have done a great job, you see the Instagram videos they put out and stuff like that and the Twitter videos and just to be leaders right now in a time where uh, a lot of uncertainty and, you know, if we get back to the hockey, that's going to be even, uh, you know, a cherry on top for everyone because I know how excited I'd be to play. And I'm sure there's many teams out there that want to finish this thing off. Yeah, well, you have had a great opportunity to play alongside our uh, Ar- Temi Panarin. And uh, he seems like a real neat guy, let alone a really good hockey player. What's uh, mm-hmm. the experience like both from a hockey standpoint and just getting to know a guy who just seems like a lot of fun? Yeah, he's great. I mean, I, I said this before, Gina, I've been really lucky with, you know, McDavid, uh, Dreisaitl, Tavares, you know, so many great players in my career. I've been really lucky. And uh, Panarin's one of those guys, too. And uh, the best part about him is how great of a team guy he is. I think, uh, you know, with the Russian guy, sometimes the English is a little bit broken in the media, but behind closed doors, he's pretty talkative and he tries to communicate the best he can. And he's pretty funny. He's got a great, great hu- sense of humor to him and uh, really keeps the mood light. And you know, when you see a guy as talented as he is and uh, how dominant he is on the ice and you see his fun personality, I think it's infectious to everyone. And um, I mean, he's been great for me. I mean, we've had pretty good chemistry and he's really challenged me to be a better player. And he's, uh, you know, pushed me to be, you know, be better every day and be ready to get better and to work on my skills with him and uh, to try to improve. And, you know, that's been awesome for me and not only me, just our whole team. So, um, and yeah, you know, I think when the points and the production's there, you, you know, that's the thing you look at. But I think if you look at how hard he works and uh, how fun, how much fun he has doing it every day. I think that's also, uh, you know, a great trait that he has. And we're like, we're really lucky to have him. I mean, I, without him and Zabinijad, it's tough to imagine where our team would be this year. They've been really special for us. You mentioned uh, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, uh, Panera and Tavares, uh, some, some guys you've had a, a chance to, to play alongside. Is there, are they all really different or are there a couple of consistent themes you see in them that's allowed them to be so successful? I think they're very, very different off the ice. All of them, they all have completely different personalities. But I think the one thing is, is that the biggest thing I notice is all the great players bring it in the game. But I think the top, top players, I think every time they have their gear on, they want to be the best player on the ice. And I remember Connor in practice and I've seen Panarin in practice and, you know, they want to beat you one on one. They want to score in practice. They want to be they want to they want to do it and they do it every day. they, They don't take a day off. And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's really hard to do. It's not easy to do that. And especially when you have so much pressure on you and you're playing so many minutes, but those guys bring it every day and especially in practice. And that's a, uh, that's a real, uh, real tough thing to learn to do, but to, to play with guys like that really rubs off on your teammates. Uh, what's it been like for you to see both sides of the, uh, the New York rivalry uh, first as an Islander and now a Ranger. Is it, was it, is it at all s- strange or you're now getting used to being on the other side of one of the great uh, rivalries, not only in hockey, but in sports? Yeah, it's it's honestly awesome. I think, uh, you know, I love living in Long Island. I love the people there. The fans were great. They're very, very passionate. And um, I had no, you know, no hard feelings when I left. And then to be on the other side of it now, it's kind of uh, it's kind of crazy because the games are so heated between us. It's similar to you know, Calgary, Edmonton and Hawaii. I think, uh, you know, the buildings are usually mixed with fans and it's really high emotion. And teams definitely put extra stock into those games, I think. Um, every time we play the Islanders, it feels like a playoff game, no matter what the situation is. So um, it's fun to be on this side of it now. I think uh, very unique. Not many players have experienced both of it. But, uh, you know, I'm privileged to, you know, spend most of my playing career in New York. And I feel like a true New Yorker. And I feel like I, um, you know, have a lot in common with the people there and uh, had a great relationship with a lot of the fans on both sides of it. But, uh, you know, to be a Ranger is a really special thing, I think, to play at Madison Square Garden is uh, one of the coolest feelings in the world. And the fans love the team. and. So much great history with both franchises, but uh, it's definitely special to be a Ranger right now, and I'm real happy with where I'm at. Uh, being in New York is, uh, you know, an experience everyone should at, at least uh, try, whether it be as a visitor or someone who lives and works mm-hmm. there like you. Uh, do you get an opportunity? Uh, you're playing so much and traveling uh, to go to Broadway shows, uh, Empire State Building. Uh, do you do any touristy stuff, or is that more relegated to when people come visit you and they want to do that stuff? A little bit of both. My wife uh, always seems to find things to do for us, which is great. But uh, yeah, you know, you mentioned the visitors. It's funny. Uh, there's a when you play in New York City and you have a condo in uh, <laughs> so, southern Manhattan, it's funny how many people tend to come visit you. Now. Yeah, so, right. right. Um, no, it's great. There's so much to do. I mean, the restaurants you can go you can eat for days and weeks on end and never get bored of the food. And 
Uh, the Broadway shows have been really cool. I've been lucky enough to see a few of those. And, and I think I've pretty much been to every major sightseeing attraction. So, um, you know, it's been, uh, it's, it's a great city. It never sleeps. Uh, you can take a, a subway or a cab and in 10 minutes, you can do pretty much anything in the world that you can imagine. And, uh, it's a pretty unique living situation, but, uh, if you embrace it and you enjoy it and you want to branch out and learn things, it's uh, it's really cool. All right, Ryan, we're going to finish up with uh, rapid fire. Here's uh, five quick questions for you. Um, favorite goal you've ever scored? Oh, that's a tough one. I think uh, I have two that come to mind. One was my first NHL goal, then my first goal as a Ranger too. I think both were uh, pretty cool for me that stick out immediately. But, uh, you know, every goal is big in the NHL. They're hard to get, so I'll take all of them. <laughs> uh, favorite arena, whether it be – you know, I, I guess as, as a visitor, but you can also pick a couple that you, you played in as a home side player. Um, okay, I'll go. Uh, favorite visiting rink is Montreal. I think that's just a great atmosphere. And I think the ice is really good there too, which may sound weird, but I love the ice there. And uh, I'm going to go off the board with my other one. When we went to Germany with the Oilers, the rink in Cologne was unbelievable. Yeah. That was a pretty cool experience too. Yeah, that was uh, like being at a soccer game, but you're, you're, you're it's playing crazy. hockey. Uh, it's crazy. Favorite, you've got lots of time to... to watch movies and do some things you might not normally have time for. Favorite sports movie? Ooh, uh, I think uh, for me, Remember the Titans is, I mean, it's tough to beat that one, I think. Uh, there's obviously some comedy uh, sports movies and stuff like that, but I think Remember the Titans is a, is a real, real classic. Favorite athlete? Ooh, I'd probably say Tiger Woods. Um, I don't really kind of follow too many individual athletes. As an athlete myself, I tend to, you know, just take a step back in that sense because I know what it's like every day. So I don't want to like obsess over people. But, uh, you know, with Tiger Woods, he's kind of the one guy I really, really follow and admire. All right. Uh, left the last one as the toughest one. Uh, favorite brother that you would have to be self-isolated or quarantined with if you had to? Uh, I would say my youngest brother, Matt. I think uh, <laughs> I think me and Dylan, uh, we would probably go at it too much and get on each other's nerves. I think we probably have a little bit of a shorter fuse, both of us. So I think I tend to go with the more patient brother that, uh, that could probably deal with me a little bit longer. Well, Ryan, uh, to you, your family, your brothers, uh, stay safe. Uh, thanks for spending time with us and uh, giving us some of your time uh, during this session of Rapid Fire. There's lots of time. Anytime. Thanks, Gene. Take care, buddy.